Welcome back, everyone. This is Eric Malkavian, and I am among the pillars of eternity. Uh, I'm at the Iron Flail Fort after facing the Eyeless Ones. Let's continue. Okay, so... Taking a look at our journal, the Forgotten Army. Find out how to call off the army. One of the stalwart delegates was a fanatical worshiper of Andra, who killed herself before she could provide answers. I learned from her soul that she came from the Abbey of the Fallen Moon, and that the abbot there knows that the army is able to call it off from the place he called the reliquary. If I can reach the room, I may be able to stop an invasion before it began. The abbot also mentioned that someone called a Tidebringer would be coming to replace him. That information could prove useful in infiltrating the place. So we need to go get Manea. Okay. A man named Kyoto knows how to call the monstrous army. He mentioned that would be done in the reliquary. Okay, so go. Let's go get Manea. These things will have to wait. Observing it from below, you notice that the watchtower at the side gate appears to be unmanned. You find no hostile faces peering over the fence either. The roof of the tower crosses over the fort walls. Climbing it may provide means of getting inside. Well, I don't need to do that now. Basically, I cut my way through there. Of course. All right, let's get the heck out of here. <sighs> yeah, we're not going there yet. We have to get Manea. Oh, boy. Yeah, let's go back there. Okay, so we had a payday. Um, Womut. Crew at Durgan's Valley said you got those cannons working. Thanks. Yeah, we're gonna need those cannons. Let's go see. Um. Let's go see the mayor. Well, we still haven't found your your daughter. Darren noticed you. His eyes bulge in surprise. Looks from side to side and holds his finger to his lips. The others made it back from the fort thanks to you. All except for that fanatic. Right. But you know all about her. He gives you a knowing look. She was a member of a secretive Andrite cult. So I heard. But what I really want to know is about those creatures. What do you know about them? The others saw them in the snow. Magfolk with arms like maces, they said, and dead by your hand. The eyeless. <laughs> Always thought those were hunters' tales. 
<clears throat> I can't tell the rest of Stalwart about them. Not until we know more. The superstitious ones will call it a bad omen. Another example of the ill us outlanders have brought. Mm. And it won't help when folk here are dark still at large. Not your assassin. Get that at your own peril. I understand. Look, I appreciate what you did. I just hope he doesn't come back with a bigger army. Yeah, Haven't been here long, enough. but uh, I'll tell you what I can. That's all. All right. Anyway. Let's see here. Two enemies need to flank. That's nice. Got two deception. Hmm. I gotta think. Let's see. Alright, so we gotta take Manea. Oh, crap. Who am I gonna leave behind? <laughs> okay. Um. Right, we gotta go back to. I can't leave her up here. Alright. All right. So. Go to Caden Nua. Okay, here we are in Caden Nua. What I'm going to do is rest up, get Manea, and get the heck. Heck out of, the, out of here. Okay, let's look for Manea. She's she should be somewhere. Oh, screw your mother. Yeah, we'll talk to her later. Who's this? There she is. All right, let's talk to her. What you got for me? How'd you end up in Stalwart? Other gift bearers told me Stalwart was close to the Abbey, so he suggested I ask for directions in town. You mean the other gift bearers don't know where the Abbey is? Like I said, it's one of Andra's most ancient temples. And her followers aren't really known for their 
records keeping. Let's see. Okay, why'd you become a gifter? I guess I like wandering and meeting new folks. I've never been good at staying in one place for long. Okay, I got some questions about this abbey. Me too. Why are you looking for the abbey? I'm a gift bearer. My job is to gather tokens of things people want forgotten and surrender them to the Lady of Lament. Right. Best place to do that is the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. What kind of tokens do you take? Anything that represents a moment or a memory someone wishes to leave behind. Love notes, awkward family heirlooms, bad poetry, the kinds of things you want to forget. Uh, gift bearers usually dispose of tokens in the sea. Why are you going to the abbey? Well, you throw some things into the sea, and maybe they wash up on shore one day. But you want something really good and forgotten, you take it to the abbey. Edward stares at Durance with a half-crazed look in his eyes, scratching his head in contemplation. His smile broadens as he thinks. Really? <laughs> so he's, trying, he's thinking about getting rid of him there. So what are you taking to the Abbey now? The Abbey's all about forgetting. Wouldn't be much forgetting if I told you about it, would there? Smile falters. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Where to begin? I spent almost ten years as a mercenary in Old Balea. Plenty of work there. She tilts her head up, starts counting things off her own fingers. After that, I fought with pirates in Deadfire or for them, depending on who was paying. Did a short stint in the white that wins, then roamed around the living lands and finally joined the gift bearers in Zigmato. And here I am. Actually, I was asking about where you came from before your adventures. Not much to tell. She waves a hand and looks away quickly. Hmm. Grew up in Ruatai. That's when I was a pretty young thing and haven't been back since. Why not? Oh, you know, spent almost 20 years here. Change scenery is good. Let's see. Better look forward to back. That's why I always say. So why so much travel? I can ask you the same. <laughs> Guess staying in one place never much suited me. And you gave up soldiering, piracy, and venturing to join Andra's gift bearers? She laughs. Plenty of adventures, just different circumstances. Hmm. Uh, that's all for now. All right, um, hmm. All right here. Take a look at her equipment. Let's see. What is she anyway? She's a soldier. Alright. So we're going to leave Little Devil here. Um. Okay. We're gonna rest As up. you wish. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, here we go. If you say so. We'll see you later. Uh, All right, party. I'm here. Got a lot of leveling up with the big girl. Okay, we'll be back after we level her up. All right, there we go. Not really sure how this is all going to turn out. Long journey. Skinny finished escorting the spell platoon. Well, this should be interesting. Infiltrate the Abbey. Take a look at our quest. He's better. Okay, I met a gift bearer named. Mon okay, let's look for it. the Abbey. We are here. Kind of. Let's see who this is. Actually, let's set up our party. So, you said the Eyeless came from the Abbey. Right. I'd heard rumors of the Eyeless, but I always thought that name was a metaphor. Though, I would have called them Mace Hands of Doom, if anyone had asked me. Hmm. So, this is the mysterious army you've been dreaming about, huh? It's a wonder you're getting any sleep. That's why we're going to the Abbey, to stop them. <sighs> I'm regretting all of my decision-making up to this point. Okay. Still, I guess a suicidal plan is better than none. Something on your mind? Yeah, there's something I haven't told you. Well, I don't normally talk about this, but you mentioned your awakening. She visits with a string of beads. I guess I've had a similar problem. Really? There's something I remember from a former life. Happened hundreds of years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday. How do you remember it? Happened while I was fighting in Old Valia 20 years ago. My unit was camped out in the palace we'd just taken. The others were roasting the last of the Marchesos pigs in the feast hall. So, I went to the wine cellars to fetch a few bottles. She works a finger into a knot. I don't know how long she'd been hiding there, but there was this old woman. Must have been one of the servants. Her fingers curl into fists. She had this wild look in her eyes. 
I approached her and tried to tell her not to be afraid, that she was safe. Linnea holds out her hand, reliving the memory. She screamed and grabbed my arm. It felt like someone had hit me in the back of my head. I blacked out for a few minutes, and when I came to, she was gone. Okay, go on. I took a few bottles up with me, feasted with the rest of the troops. But when I went to bunk, I had a dream. Only it was more vivid than any dream I've ever had. I tasted the sweat on my lips, felt the jungle air on my skin, heard the cries. She stops and swallows, shaking her head. What about the old woman? I asked the other troops. None of them had seen her. Hmm. Anyway, I laid off the drink for several days. But I kept having the dream. After a few weeks, I, I thought a change of scenery might do me good. Since then, I've been a pirate in the dead fire, a pilgrim in the white that wins, an adventurer in the living lands, and a gift bearer in a shamatal. Gives you a rueful smile. Okay, I see you're running away from her. What's this memory? It was a war. Centuries ago, before a deer in unification. Folds her arms in front of herself. I was a soldier then. Led a campaign across the northern forests to subdue some of the outlying Kalkland villages. Brutal work. I don't understand. What war? This was 500 years ago, when Adir was a folk kingdom on one side and elven country on the other. They fought on and off before they joined. Now the folk and elven rulers marry to keep the peace. Right, the campaign. Lost a third of my forces to the forest, and another third to the elven scouts hiding in it. By the time we reached the first village, we'd crushed their defenses, and they'd bled us. She shakes her hand. Wasn't much more than children and the elderly left. But they spit on us when we marched into town. Skull twists her face, her eyes are cold. The village elders surrendered and offered us lodging in the old meeting hall. Mm. And when the sun set, they tried to burn it down around us. Of course they did. She closes her eyes. They barely got a flame going, but that wasn't the point. They betrayed you after surrendering. Seems serious to me. And would that I'd had your principles. In their defiance, I saw months more of pointless, bloody battle as we fought for the rest of the region. I had to break them. And I had to send a message to the rest of the villages. Her head shakes as you raise them to cover her face. So I nailed every last one of them to the trees around the town and left them there to die. It's terrible. Don't I know it? Wipes out her face with the heel of her hand. I told you I was looking for the Abbey of the Fallen Moon so I could leave something behind. Right. There's a pool there, the salt well. It's where gift bearers leave the heaviest burdens. It's said that a person can enter it and leave their own memories behind. There's a distant, hungry look in her eyes. Anyway, we should get going. Shoulders are back. Cats glimpse of something unusual in it. Thick row of cloth bound by leather. What's that? Something I've been saving for better days. Tucks it away. I want to ask you about something else. What you got for me? Tell me why you really became a gift bearer. Heard about the order from some missionaries. Why I was in the living lands. Heard I'm just doctrine before, but the way they talked about the peace of forgetting, washing the old way with the tide. 
sounded good. And get bearers work, taking to the road, helping people lose their own burdens. That sounded good to me. Kept hoping I'd find a way for me to lose my burden along the way. Renea confessed that she's seeking the Abbey to dispose of her own painful memory. Oh boy, that's not going to work. The Abbey has a well in which the way faithful can cleanse themselves of their past. Hmm. I suspect what's going to happen is she's going to lose every bit of memory she has. Long boss. A dwarf, clothed in but a few scraps of fur, puffs up his bare chest with every drag from his pipe. Come a long way to get some air, haven't you? What are you doing here? Enjoying fine weather just a bit longer. Smiles, letting a cloud of smoke, frosted breath escape through his teeth. My mistress had business with the Andrides. We'll be off as soon as she's done at the Abbey. Meantime... I was told to stay put. They don't want any outsiders meandering about. Sure, I put some kind of hex on me. He says I won't even remember any of this. The copper's worth it. He says I'll wake up at home with a full coin purse. Opposite of most of my mornings. So that had a certain appeal. Tell me about your mistress. Which one? <laughs> That's how I chuckle. Wish she were the fun kind. She's a gift bearer. Paid me well to guard her on the journey, though. I'm looking to get inside. Are you now? Pulls on the pipe through his clenched teeth. Far as I know, straight this way. Middle path on the right with the rune arch. They let you in, of course. Andrades are none too friendly, but to their own. My mistress went through the archway. Spoke to some guards there, then headed on. They got eyes on the other path. Cast me dirty looks from afar when they pass this way. As if I stand here in plain view. If I had some grand design sneaking into their blazing church. What's an abbey got that's worth hiding anyway, monks? You know any other way into the abbey? No, nope, but it's an abbey, not a fortress. You bet it's got holes like any fat old monster. Supply passages, escape routes. Be lying if I said I'd never explored one uninvited. When I was too young to know better, help myself to its relics. Let's just say if a certain war goddess has her way, I'll be living next life as a dung roll bug. Why are you helping me? Got the look about you. Looks like you need it. Maybe there's something I don't like about this place. Like it's hiding something. My younger days, I'd be going in there. Hmm. Doubt with me again. Any luck? My mistress will return soon. Hope you find what you're looking for. Okay, so. Well. Now that I have Manea with me. I don't think I need to sneak in. As you wish. Let's just go straight in. If they, say no, if they say no. Hard to imagine a whole sect living out here. But I guess that's the point. Right. I mean, we're just going to go straight in. I mean, go up through the archway. I mean, what are you going to say? Hold! Who's there? Uh. Do we got somebody trapped in there? Ha <laughs> Um. Kale's waiting for me. I'm the tie bringer. 
guy can I be sure I'm here to replace the high abbot so don't let me pass I'll see to that your bed is moved out of here guy's eyes bulge puts his hand up in apology F -f forgive me my caution we were told to expect you the high abbot awaits you inside <laughs> I have no idea. Oh. The lady keep you. <laughs> this is utter madness. Oh, Kauto knew Saman was upon us. The Tidebringer. It's been so long. My soul is ready, brother. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> oh boy. So they let you through. You must be our visitor. The High Abbot awaits you inside, straight back. Okay. All right. <laughs> British boy has arrived seeking employment. <laughs> um, find out how to reach the relic for it. Oh boy. You are a guest, I take it. You will find the abbot past the chamber of the fallen moon behind me. Mmm, smells fresh. That can't be the salt well. A thin film of iridescent dust floats on the calm surface of the waters, obscuring its depths. He seemed preoccupied. I expect I would be too in his position. the high abbot oh boy hi abbot Kyoto. where the other andrites in the abbey are clad in drab functional garments the samua seems dressed for an occasion his robe is bright and glossy his neck and arms are be decked with jewelry the symbols of his goddess are crowded into every available space ah <sighs> good the Conclave has elected a Tidebringer after all. I had begun to worry. <laughs> he looks back, nosing your company and us. And they took my advice in providing you an escort. Very good. I am sorry I could not make your journey easier. Right. I am Kauto, the High Abbot. <laughs> came as soon as I could. And just in time. The May Queen's tide is nearly past its peak. Much longer, and we'd have had to wait another year. Right. The rules of the Rising are quite clear on that, unfortunately. When you are ready, we will begin with the recitation. The Conclave mentions something about a reliquary. Yes, of course. I would not pass my station to you without passing that knowledge as well. Right. It is the Abbey's most sacred chamber. When the Rising is complete, I will take you there myself. In fact, the ritual demands it. About the recitation. <laughs> you seem nervous. <laughs> The Conclave chose you for a reason. For a devout follower of Andra, 
The answers will flow naturally to you. <laughs> I remember my own rising. The Conclave sent me on the same exhausting journey. When it came time for the recitation, I could not remember a word. But it all came back in time. Our goddess smiles upon the forgetful. He taps a large golden ring with a wave insignia as though it were proof. Our library is open to you, as are the grounds outside. There is a beautiful mural out there that you should see, if you haven't yet. And you may, of course, speak with the gift bearers here, if it helps your recollection. Uh. Take your time and examine these things before your recitation. What if I fail? Do not be afraid to fail. A lapse here or there is to be expected. But do take care in your work. Even my patience has limits. Okay. All right. Complete the recitation. All right. So... <laughs> All right, guys, come over here. <coughs> I, I've got to, got to talk to these people here and see if we can get a handle on this. All right, let's talk to some of these gift bearers. The Abbot's blessing to you. Delay, keep you right. Abby's at you. Take a look at the mural. A massive crystal, its jagged edges iridescent with an unearthly glow. Mosaics and tiles have been carefully arranged around the strange rock. Okay, let's talk to the gift bearer. Ah, the gift bearer holds in her hand a gem the size of a fist. She draws a curved line in air over it, then tosses it into the water. As the gem hits the water, it disappears from sight, it throws, though it had dissolved. What happened to the gem? What gem? Gem you tossed in the pool. I remember no gem. You tossed in. How could you have forgotten? The pool is blessed by Andre Tidebringer. I don't understand. All that belongs to Andra is forgotten, and all things forgotten belong to Andra. All right, here we go. Okay, I spoke to a gift bearer who imparted to me that all things forgotten belong to Andra and that all things that are belong that belong to Andra are forgotten. Okay. Let's go talk to another gift bearer. Okay, take a look at this. Cap sift that gave form to the statue appears 
too skilled in finding come from mortal hands. Oh my. That's a Kraken. Pulling down a ship. Okay, let's go up here. I never knew. Did you hide in the White March after that? As far away as I could. The Dominels didn't care I was a gift bearer. Evidence is evidence. The High Abbot imparted to me that I wasn't alone. That he has nightmares sometimes as well. Truly? Oh, it surprised me to hear it. He has such a peaceful manner. Like the warmth of the nearby fire, a thin layer of frost clings to the supply. I see something. Oh. Okay. Really don't want it. Even with your labors, your presence of mind never falters. I don't know how you do it. Perhaps your thoughts would swim deeper if your tongue didn't come out for air so often, dear brother. This area is forbidden. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Well, that was interesting. So the Hall of Silence is forbidden. You look pale, sister. Find someone to take your place. I'll stand watch. I had hoped I was over this illness, but clearly not. I shall take your advice. Door sealed shut. Okay, let's go to the library.
Smells like an ocean breeze. We've got to be close. A long time ago that was, saw the abbot holding the witness, and the veil of tears parted for him. They call out sometimes. Even the guards below think it's strange. For Andra, most like. They surely long for her embrace. Ring of unshackling. What the heck is this? Like a living prison, thick arms of coral have grown around an assortment of old weathered relics. See it done. It's here. The salt well. In the room is a pool. It's a small but deep enough that you can't see the bottom. The glassy surface almost looks frozen. So does Manea. She stands rooted in place staring at you it. You know, I thought it'd be bigger. Hmm. Looks deep anyway. Gift bearers say the heaviest regrets and greatest sorrows get left here. So it better be. And I thought she'd be diving in by now. Uh, you know how when you've been thinking about something so long, you're worried that when you finally get it, it won't be what you expected? She tugs at one of her bracelets. I mean, for all we know, that thing's just filled with leeches. It's just stalling. Don't remind me. What if your memory of the massacre has prevented you from committing a similar crime? That was my soul, but it wasn't me. I was a different person, shaped by a different past. I don't think I could do anything so awful now. Her hands are clenched in front of her. Despite all, she sounds like she's asking questions. And this memory has shaped you and taught you restraint. Without it, you might choose different. <sighs> I was afraid you'd say something like that. She stares at the well for several seconds. My parents always said that anything that seems too good to be true probably is. You spend so much time searching for a way to fix what's broken. 
You don't see that the fixing would only break something else. Only one thing left to do. And it pulls a roll clop on a hover pack you call seeing it earlier. Snatch the lead cords that bind it, fold it, reveal a wine bottle. Took this from the Marchezzo cellar the night I was awakened. One of the finest vintages there. Been saving it to celebrate my new start. I think it's time to open it. Jams knife in the cork, twists it out with a squeaking a less jammy aroma wafts from the bottle. She holds it under her nose and breathes deeply. Puts the bottle to her lips and tilts it back. That's a long, slow drink. Smacks mm. her lips. A few years past its peak. Good thing we're enjoying it now. Swirls wine in the bottle before holding out to you. The best burdens are the ones you share. Yes, it is. Maya passes you the bottle. An unpleasant sharpness has crept into the wine, but it's an enjoyable draught all the same. Together, you finish the bottle. Time to make some good memories. Manea was granted a satisfied mind. All right. Agree with that. Yeah, you never know. Lavender and lie at it. Where there's a pick, there's a way. We take that. All right, let's go. Hopefully, nobody will be missing that. Let's see what we procured. Cudgel of some sort. Saint Wiggis Cudgel. Wow, persecuting. Strictly devoted follower of Wodica, Weigelt was haunted by dreams of criminals committing horrific acts of violence only to escape punishment or receive one that was unduly light. She came to believe Wodica was speaking to her through these dreams, demanding these people receive justice. Weigelt found these criminals in hideouts and homes and very often in jails serving inadequate sentences. She would steal into these places which were frequently under heavy guard, find a way to the criminal and pronounce the judgment of Wodica. Her incredible, incredible knack for reaching these places were in some instances later declared as miracles when she was canonized. The criminals lucky would only mean disfigurement but most were executed on the spot with Weigel's cudgel. Eventually, Weigel's reputation spread too far, and many criminals that feared her began to set traps and issue bounties. When she was finally caught, she was clubbed to death with her own weapon. It is said that with her final words, she declared she was a murderer, and she deserved the fate. St. Weigel's cudgel is a simple spike club with a leather-wrapped handle. The wood itself is irreversibly stained reddish-brown with the blood of criminals. <gasps> okay. Let's see if we can find this library. This ah. is the record? Yes. See that it is cast away with the others. Now, let's see. I 
need to check out some of these books. The sea and her love. To this little Andre him, the sea beheld her love, shining bright from on high. She bade him come down from his palace in the sky. Her love could not be swayed, so she took a piece into her heart, and all who saw her grief that day sleep in her bosom of her heart. Interesting. I'm not going through the books. Abaddon's hand. Oh! Selected correspondence of gift bringer Iden. Okay. Tides and moons. We've heard the legend, we have all heard the legend of Andra and Sen Balafa and the explanation that the goddess love for the moon causes the tides. And as men and women of science, we know this to be but a shadow of the truth. Yet there's another myth that we have been quicker to dismiss. I wonder if it does not merit further examination. Andrites tell of a small moon. I own a bra that the goddess supposedly pulled from the sky in an earlier age. While such a thing seems impossible, for I only bra still roams the sky above, it's true that explorers in the far reaches found mineral fragments that do not naturally occur on any known continent in Aora. Okay. I don't think that's what we're looking for. This gift bearer's pilgrimage. Gift, okay, tell us of burdens of being a gift bearer. Lesson contains within may prove valuable. Okay. Give the letter to me. For once you have forgotten the letter, wife can cause you no further pain. Man gives her the letter and finds his tears dried up. Hence, gift bearer leaves at peace. Gift bearer continues on contemplating the man's story, but does not get not far. For she counts an old woman in tears holding a string of beads. Why do you weep? I hold here a string of beads that counted years of my daughter's life. Sickness took her. Give me the beads. Then for once you've forgotten the beads, the daughter can truly rest. Light in hand. She prays to Andra to allow the object to be forgotten and cast him into the water. Yet long after they sunk beneath the waves, Gift Bear finds herself still weeping. Merciful Andra, service I have helped people forget the troubles yet. Though I pass them on to you, I feel them. Gift Bear listens to the wisdom of the crashing waves till she understands. To feel the troubles of others in your soul is, is a burden in itself. However, she has no token to give. For troubles are not hers to forget. Okay, I give myself to you. For once I am in your care, no memory can haunt you. Okay. Alright, so. Alright, there we have that answer. Okay. Let's see if there's any. If there's another, another gift bearer this way. Where are we? Okay. 
That's the front door. Okay, so we've been here. I think I'm looking for one more gift bearer. Talk to Kyoto. All right, here we go. What can he do? <laughs> Are you prepared now for the recitation? Can Very good. The recitation. We shall commence the rising. First is Anthu. Last is Dianthu. For the tide comes at the end and leaves at the beginning. I am Disaman the Ebb. Who comes this way? I am Saman the Flood. Blessed be Saman that washes over the shore and brings the end. Blessed be Disaman that returns to the sea and leaves behind the beginning. A gift bearer comes to Disaman and asks him to bear his burdens away. What token do you offer, gift bearer? I give myself, for gift bearer has no other tokens to offer. The token is received in Andra's name. Tell me of your burdens. I have none, for all that belongs to Andra is forgotten. In Andra's embrace, our burdens are lifted. Kyoto appears pleased. He nods. Menea sighs with relief. <laughs> the Tidebringer shows himself worthy of his charge. Your purpose here, Tidebringer, is to perform the ceremony of the Rising. It is the transition of one phase of service to the next. On the level beneath us in the Halls of Silence, our low-tide brothers and sisters have lived for many years, sealed by their own will. It is time for them to be relieved of service, and for the high-tide brothers and sisters here to take their place. In the Halls below you will find a relic, Andra's witness, and a spurgulum for dispensing holy water, but also something more. It is set into a device it operates atop a flight of steps. The device will flood the halls of silence. This is the rising. What? Uh, won't the people down there drown? It is the will of Ondra. Every monk assigned to the abbey understands and accepts this. He smooths back his thick, socked pair with one hand. A gray strand sticks to his palm. He frowns at it, then looks back up. And... The monks here have all served as gift bearers. We bear away people's most painful memories, and always a part of them remains with us. Okay. He's right about that much. In the halls of silence, memory itself fragments until it is no more. The halls are a reprieve from a gift bearer's burden. In the end, the halls take all memory, but the process takes a toll, as you might imagine. After many years, when the process is complete, the rising is performed, to give final peace to those who dwell there. 
This is your charge. What do I do when the rising is complete? The high tide is to replace the low and stand vigil in the halls of silence until the next rising. When you have completed the rising, bring Andra's witness to me here. I will show you the last of what you need to know. Once I have Andra's witness, what do I do with it? The device it operates is a simple valve mechanism. It will be clear to you when you see it. I will return once the rising is complete. To reach your destination, you will need to know the sign of the tide, which is kept only by the High Abbot. It's said that it is the first knowledge lost when the Abbot joins the low tide in the Halls of Silence. Watch carefully. Kale to contort fingers right hand to a particular curled shape, something like a C. Then with his left hand, traces an arc from center to end simultaneously with his index and little finger. I trust you will perform your duty, Tidebringer. Okay. This is crazy. Okay. Um. <clears throat> we're gonna leave off here for the time being. I want to thank you for watching. I'm Eric Malkabian. And we are impersonating the Tidebringer here in the temp the Abbot of the Fallen Moon. Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Boy, I hope we don't get in trouble. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Goodbye.